So e-bike batteries are more powerful, less heavy, and more reliable than ever. Bosch's most recently released version of their power tube battery weighs the same as its predecessor, but provides 40 watt hours more capacity. Unfortunately though, whilst batteries are becoming more reliable, they're built to be replaced. And I'm not saying this to be sensational. Bosch's 2025 battery guide literally has a page titled Exchange Instead of Repair. To quote the document, it says that for safety reasons, you should not repair or refresh faulty, old or worn out batteries, but instead have them recycled appropriately. And so this means that millions of perfectly repairable batteries are being scrapped every year, even if it's just a single cell or component causing the fault. But Infinite Battery, a French manufacturer, wants to change that. They recently brought out a product with a repairable design that lets you swap out cells in minutes, no soldering or special tools required. Their goal? To break the current monopoly of closed systems and give consumers the right and means to repair their electric vehicle batteries. We'll hear from them later in the video. So could this be the battery that finally brings repairability to an increasingly electrified bicycle industry? And what are the practical safety or legal concerns that might stop them? I'm Luke, and you're watching The Upshift. Micromobility schemes are taking over our cities. Go to any big, major European metropolis, and you'll probably be able to get around on some kind of two-wheeled electric vehicle. Even private vehicle users and courier companies are increasingly swapping out their cars for electric bicycles. And whilst particularly electric scooters have had their fair share of criticisms, this is broadly a good thing, right? Uh, cities are becoming less congested, less polluted, and people are no longer constrained by the limits of public transport routes and timetables. But there is a catch. Thousands of electric bikes or electric scooters dotted around a city also means you have thousands of small lithium-ion batteries dotted around the city. So we might want to ask ourselves what happens eventually when these batteries and the vehicle as a whole reach the end of their life. And this is where some people are foreshadowing a problem. Now, it's quite well known that batteries don't last forever. They degrade over time, which reduces their capacity, and so you can travel less far on the same charge, and ultimately, your bike or scooter won't meet the performance requirements you originally wanted it to use for. And so, at some point, electric vehicle batteries have to be retired. Now, when a lithium-ion battery fails, you broadly have three options. The first of these is just to repair the battery. And this is because more often than not, when a lithium ion battery in an e-bike or a scooter fails, it's not actually because of the lithium ion cells themselves. Often it's the battery management system or some kind of connection or a small component within the larger battery pack that's failed rather than there being something really wrong with the cells themselves. And also sometimes it might just be an individual cell that's not working as required, whilst all the other cells in the battery are still functioning normally. And repair is actually something that's looked at quite a lot by these big bike sharing companies because fundamentally that's where they earn their money. The more bikes they can keep on the road, the more money they'll earn. And so it's in their interest to repair their batteries. Now, the second option is to repurpose the battery. When batteries reach what's called the end of their life, they've simply reduced capacity to a point where it's no longer really attractive to continue using that battery. So you might have bought a bike with a range of X kilometers, but now after so many charge cycles, that same full charge can't get you as far in terms of distance. And so you have a bike which no longer meets the performance specifications you originally bought it for. And this is where repurposing comes in because even though those batteries might not have enough capacity to power your e-bike, they still might have enough capacity to power, let's say, some kind of lighting for a restaurant, for example, or a small electronic device like a speaker or a power bank. And so this is where batteries that don't have enough capacity remaining to be used in an e-bike can be repurposed into alternative solutions. And there are companies doing this like Voltaire in France or React in Belgium. I'll link them 
down below. So that's repurposing. The third option you have is just to recycle the battery. And in this case, the cells are then extracted from the larger battery pack and go into recycling facilities where hopefully the critical raw materials, the lithium and the cobalt and the nickel often found in these types of batteries can be recovered so that at least we don't lose these quite rare and valuable resources. But for each of these three strategies, there's a problem. And the first of which is logistics. So with e-bikes, because you have such small concentrations of these batteries, because the battery packs themselves are quite small, it costs a lot to transport all these small batteries back to a centralized location where they can be repaired, repurposed or recycled. But the second problem, and the one I want to focus on in this video, is about the design of the batteries. E-bike batteries or e-scooter batteries are fundamentally designed not to be taken apart. And this is a huge problem. If you want to repair a battery, you want to be able to open it up and access those cells or elements of the battery pack quickly. If you want to repurpose a battery, you want to be able to quickly open up that battery pack, take out the cells, start testing them and think about where you could reuse those cells. And if you want to recycle a battery pack, you don't want to be putting the entire battery pack with all the plastic casing around it into a recycling plant. You want to be able to extract those individual lithium ion cells. And this is where fundamentally the industry has fallen short. Most battery packs today are really very sealed units that are hard to take apart. And inside the battery pack, often the individual cells are wrapped in tape or fire retardant materials. And companies have up to now put this mostly down to safety, right? So lithium ion cells present quite a big safety risk. And if you were to say short circuit the cells, there's quite a big chance you'd cause a fire. And this is what companies are claiming to be the reason for creating these very closed, hard to open battery packs. And so I was very curious when I came across Infinite, a company trying to make it easier for businesses to repair and replace lithium ion cells without replacing the entire battery. At one point I decided to try to make myself an electric bike and the battery when I understood that all the cells were, uh, were standards, I just wanted to see how it was made in internally uh, using my connection from uh, those uh, landfills and all that stuff. I easily gathered a few of them, opened them and start dismantling the cells. And I discovered that they were all good. I mean, they were all like 90% uh, capacity remaining. Uh, I started to become really mad about that. You just heard from Alex, CEO of Infinite Battery. Before we go into the technical details about the Infinite Battery system, I just wanted to quickly outline how a typical e-bike pack works. Most e-bike battery packs are filled with these small cylindrical cells. And as of now, the industry is consolidated around one type of cell in particular, which is the 18650 cell, referring to the diameters of 18 millimeters by 65 millimeters. And these cells are then connected in series or in parallel across a battery pack to either increase the voltage or increase the capacity respectively. Current e-bike systems typically use 36, 48 or 52 volt packs with capacities ranging from anywhere between 300 to over 800 watt hours. Now, part of the problem that makes these battery packs so hard to repair is the way these cells are connected inside the battery pack. And as of now, the industry standard method to connect cells is known as spot welding. This process uses a short high current pulse to weld thin strips of pure nickel between the cell terminals. This creates a strong low resistance connection whilst transferring minimal heat to the cell, thus preventing damage. As you can imagine though, this is one of the reasons why it's hard to currently replace individual cells. If they're welded inside the battery pack, it's not like your TV remote where you can just pop it out. And so Infinite Battery have spent several years of R&D to create a battery pack that doesn't need spot welding, has enough safety mechanisms to allow users to overhaul their batteries with brand new cells, and is easily repairable with only a few very basic tools. So how does it work? Basically, Infinite Battery's design uses two panels. So you take the cells and sandwich them between two panels. And these panels contain small cutouts where the cell connections are. 
and this means that once you clamp down the panel the cutouts bulge out slightly and it's this tension that keeps the connection between the circuitry and the cells inside the battery pack. Now there were a lot of skeptics arguing that nothing would ever be able to compete with spot welding because of its robust and low resistance design but in all fairness to infinite battery it seems to be working they currently have these battery packs operational in 6000 bikes in a shared fleet and having tested it the electrical resistance is comparable if not better than spot welding the cells are connected like in all batteries to a battery management system and yeah, Infinite Battery's website contains loads of information, PDFs and videos explaining how to construct your own battery pack. Infinite's battery pack has space for 40 cells and allows for both 36 and 48 volt configurations. As for how much it costs, it's $234 for a DIY kit and $352 for a fully assembled and tested battery, including the cells as well. Infinite Battery estimates it would cost you around $50 to replace all those cells. So it's like getting a brand new battery for as little as $50. Now, if we compare this to typical prices for genuine new branded batteries from say Bosch or Shimano, you're looking at between $500 to $700 for a new battery. And that's also interesting because when your Bosch or Shimano or big brand battery fails, they'll usually just tell you if it's not in warranty to go out and buy a new one. Now, the other really cool part of Infinite Battery's product is they claim to have reverse engineered the software protocols and the hardware connections to get their battery system to work with motors from a different brand. So this basically means that you could take your Bosch battery system, providing it's currently externally mounted onto the bike, and replace it with one of Infinite Battery Systems for a fraction of the price. Now on paper, this all sounds amazing. You get a battery that's about half the price of a new big brand battery, you can repair it, and in fact, you as the consumer can do a complete overhaul of cells for as little as 50 euros and then it can also be easily dismantled to recycle or reuse the cells when they reach the end of their service. But I also wanted to know what the skeptics were saying and so as you do I consulted the forums. Some of the main concerns people had were around this claim that infinite battery system could really rival spot welding but also about whether it would be possible to say replace a single cell um, if only one of the cells of the entire battery pack was faulty, and whether this reverse engineering of software protocols could be blocked at some point by a company uh, if they were to just bring out a new software update or something. And so I asked some of these questions to Alex, and here is what he had to say. Another area of maybe confusion is, so you say the battery's repairable, is that to be able to take all the cells out and replace them with a complete set of new cells, or is it like a cell individual cell replacement? Practically, with our battery, you could replace one cell for another. But in, in, uh, in practice, you cannot really do this kind of thing because you need to ensure that the, the cell that you replace is perfectly matched with the existing cells of the pack. We, so we say repairable. Repairable because you can change the cells, that's good. But you can change anything in the battery. You can change the BMS, and that's mm -hmm. like one third or maybe one half of the problem that are encountered by the batteries. You can change the connectors, you can change the seals, you can change the, the casing. When, when it comes to cells, what we do at the moment is we exchange all the cells. But instead of throwing out the, the cells that we take from this battery, uh, since they don't have any spot welds and since it's very easy to take them out, they have quite a lot of residual value. And even if they are too old, it's still better to have a cell that's separated from the pack mm. for the recycling. Yeah. I think another aspect of, of the battery is that it's like reverse compatible with some existing systems. Maybe you could speak to um, some issues that might arise in the future, like if Bosch were to bring out an update or... Um, so we, we tend to be the bad boy here and try to, to you know, shift a bit the, the way it works. So this, uh, the, our battery is compatible with most brands. You can just use the app to configure it and say, okay, I'm using Bosch, I'm using Shimano, and then it will use 
the good communication protocol to work with the motors. Uh, we expect that some of those companies will, uh, will come to us and say you don't have the right to do so. But when you look at others' industry, and for example, if you look the car industry, they don't have the right to do that. For example, Bosch will be able to provide alternator for, for, uh, for OD or for Peugeot. And those bar those parts can be exchanged. You, you have no right to block everything. Yeah. And yeah, my last question was, there's obviously lots of right to repair laws about to hit Europe. Do you think that will spur any other manufacturers to do something similar to you? I really hope it will. Uh, I'm a bit concerned about that because, for example, uh, in 2023, there was this new EU regulation about batteries with huge uh, advancements. You know, 2023 was still a good mindset. Uh, it's not like now where everybody's scared and, uh, and we realize that we're not manufacturing anything and that the whole uh, car industry is at risk and everything. But in 2023, there was still some optimism about uh, how could Europe manufacture differently from other people. And one good example was that the battery regulation incentivized a lot the repairability. For example, there is still one article in this regulation that states that from 2027, all the light vehicle batteries should uh, be designed in a way that the cells can be replaceable. Instead of uh, saying, okay, we have three, four years to, to implement this, most big brands, they just gathered around uh, some cycling association, lobbying association. They are putting all their pressure on the European deputies so that they are removing this. And they are, they are, they are nearly there. The way they state it is only for safety reasons, you know. So even if most people say it makes sense to do repairability, uh, look, these guys, they, they, they are going to crush this and it's not going to be uh, man, uh, mandatory. I think what Infinite Battery are doing here is really significant. E-bikes and scooters represent a massive part of a transition away from a heavily resource consuming and polluting transport sector. But we need to ensure that in doing so, they don't become a problem themselves. While some are still clinging on to claims about safety to keep producing batteries that are hard to recycle and even harder to repair or repurpose, Infinite Battery have proven that it's possible. If you like this video, you might like one of my previous ones about a similar topic in the automotive industry where old EV batteries are being repurposed into other solutions like energy storage. For now, I'm Luke and this was The Upshift.